Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, we're still not over this year's dismal snow survey on April 1st. You can tell the snowpack looked different from Drone 5 flying over it this year, not only from the burn scars from last year's Caldor fire, but also from how little snow there was. And the gentleman who's now in charge at the California Department of Water Resources for the snow survey is taken over from Frank Gerke, who was kind of legendary for the guy putting the post in the snow every year and giving us the snow report. Well, he's retired. Sean de Guzman has now taken over. And this year, it was a bit awkward for Sean to have to tell us where the snow was at Phillips Station. If you missed it, take a moment. Here he is. Should be sitting on almost five feet of snow, uh, which is basically right where this orange tape is. There's no snow there. They look, they go to about three or four different sites up there. There were some patches up there. One of the patches had about two inches of snow. It was something like 4% of average for where the Sierra snow should have been. At that location, for the Sierra as a whole, we were at about 39% of average. That was already in the news. So what I want to do now is advance this story, add a little bit of context to what we can expect the snow in the Sierra to look like under a warmer climate, both if we do nothing and if we get our act together and start curbing some of our emissions. So let's take a look at this a number of ways. First of all, if you look at the Western United States with all of these brown circles on it, those are all plots for how the snowpack has changed throughout the West since 1955. All of the brown dots show you where the snowpack has declined. The bigger the dot, the bigger the decline. On average, Snowpack throughout the West as a whole, since 1955, has declined by about 20%. But we can get more specific than that. Let's come in for a close-up look at the Tahoe Basin. You can see there's Lake Tahoe. Plenty of survey locations on here. Let's come into that one, because that brown dot right there, that's the one that sits right outside Sugar Bowl, right off I-80, the tiny community of Norton. If you go to the Sierra, you're likely familiar with this location. You can actually see Sugar Bowl right there. There's Mount Lincoln. Let's go to that dot and click on it and get the report for that. How much has that one location changed since 1955? The number's small, but I'll read it to you. It's about 25%. And that covers the Sierra pretty well. That's how the snow has responded so far since 1955 on average. It's a broad generalization, but about a 25% decline since 1955. Question is, how will it change going forward? And there's another way to look at that. So let's change the map, and we're going to get a slightly different perspective here. This doesn't tell you how deep the snowpack is or how much water it's storing. This is another way I wanted to look at. It tells you how many snow days there are. In other words, how many days throughout the winter does the, this part of the Sierra, pick your location, actually have snow covering it? When you start to get into the deep shades of white on there, you're looking at several months. Where you start to get into the lower elevations up here in the shades of blue, on average, up to this point, you still get about 60 days, 60 to 70 days. But if we look forward, if we take this bar and slide it over here. By doing that, we're now looking ahead to the year 2100. How many days out of the year will the Sierra Nevada have actual snow covering it? And we've lost a big part of that 30 to 60 day range. You still get the higher elevation stuff, which is still up there for several months at a time. But at the mid levels of the Sierra, where we're so used to having snow, where it's such a characteristic part of the experience of getting into the Sierra, we're going to lose several months of time where there's actually snow on the ground there. And that doesn't even cover what that does then for groundwater recharge, for restoring reservoirs. That just you know, addresses the one item of, you're not gonna be seeing snow in the Sierra as often or for as long lasting as we have. That's under one scenario. And this is an image that I shared in a weather extra I did a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about weather whiplash. How extreme do we want the weather whiplash to get in California? And one way to answer that is, how warm is the atmosphere going to get? This is the latest projection put out by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, showing the black line, which is how much the atmosphere is already warmed, one degree Celsius to this point. And all of those lines there show you our options. If we do nothing, the atmosphere warms up by five degrees Celsius. But we've got all these other options on here. We're at one degree now. If we get our act together, we can choose how much warming we want. That then determines how far the impacts go from this. So we don't have to go to the extreme that we just looked at. 
by losing two or three months out of the year where there's actually snow on the ground. Let's look at a couple of different projections here for how the snowpack in the Sierra could conceivably change under either a high emissions scenario over here or a more reasonable curbed emissions scenario over here. First of all, if we do nothing, temperatures in general over the Sierra by the year 2100 are going to warm by seven degrees. If we act and act in a meaningful way, we can limit that. We can't limit it completely, but we can limit it enough that the impacts become less severe. Here's another way of looking at it. So if we wanted to measure what the drop in average springtime Sierra snowpack volume would be, in other words, how much of the snowpack do we want to lose? If we do nothing, we lose 64% of it. We've already lost about 20%. But if we do nothing by 2100, we could lose 64% of it. Imagine what the really dry years and dry stretches could look like under that scenario. If we act in a meaningful way, we're still likely going to lose more of the snowpack, but it's a more manageable 30% loss. And one final way of looking at this is, the, the last take is, earlier runoff of snowmelt into mountain streams. And that's kind of what we're seeing happening this year. I mean, how warm has it been through February, March, and now into April, where what little snowpack there is, is melting off really fast. If we do nothing, we're gonna speed that up by 50 days. In other words, 50 days sooner, we're gonna see these large runoffs from the snowpack happening 50 days sooner by 2100 if we do nothing. If we act, it's still gonna run off sooner. This is already, uh, you know, gaining steam, and we've already baked in a lot of this. But we still have a huge amount of say in how extreme it gets. So we could curb it, and perhaps it's just 25 days sooner. So it all comes back to that last image of the possibility for outcomes. And this ties into so many aspects. Weather whiplash, how extreme do we want that to become? Loss of Sierra snowpack and behavior of the runoff, how different and extreme do we want that to look? In either case, they're happening, and we, we don't have a choice in the change occurring. What we do have a big choice in still is how extreme that change gets. We are not doomed yet, but we have a lot of work to do. Okay, that's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.